Am I wrong for calling my friend fake after she had plastic surgery and filler? Story time. So me and my boyfriend Steve broke up around five months ago. And we had been together for literally like five, six years. Steve was literally the love of my life. Steve is literally the most amazing guy ever. And I, I just love this guy so much. And I've literally been having the worst time of my life since we broke up. Steve is very, very handsome and very successful. He's also rich, which is very relevant. Keep that in mind. So I'm sure you can imagine that Steve is not gonna have any issues finding his next girlfriend. So when we broke up, I asked for a clean break. I wanted no contact. I just knew that this was the only way I was gonna get over Steve. So obviously my friends know all about this and they know how much I still very much love him. However, one of my friends who will call Amy has recently been joking about how Steve is back up for grabs again and she is buzzing about this. This was literally like a month after we broke up read the room amy i ignored it and i just took it as a bad joke bad timing amy is literally a 10 out of 10 i'm talking supermodel vibes she can basically get whatever she wants and she always brags about how she has never been rejected by a man ever Must be nice. I know that Steve would never go for her. He was never really into like the filler, surgery thing. Amy has had surgery. She's had Botox, filler, like lip, cheek, nose, chin. She's had the girls done. And then she's recently just come back from Turkey and had a BBL. Last time I went out for dinner, she brought up the fact that she wanted to date Steve. But one of my friends shot that down immediately and was like, we don't do that to each other. Amy just laughed it off. But at this point, I was kind of done with all the insensitive jokes. So I was like, hon, you are more than welcome to try. He just would not go for you. And she had the audacity to turn around to me and be like, well, I can literally get whoever I want. What makes you think I can't? And at this point, I snapped. And this might be where I'm in the wrong. I turned around and was like, oh, Steve isn't into fake girls like you. He doesn't like girls that have pumped their face with filler and have silicon implants scattered throughout her body. And then as if that wasn't enough, I then went on to say, and he also doesn't like girls that are just with him for his money. That was when she started crying. She stormed out of the restaurant and was like, well, now I won't feel sorry for taking him. And of course, my friends have all sided with her. I waited until I got in my car to start crying. She literally was whining me up about this for months. So what do you think? Am I wrong here? Am I in the wrong for not doing anything for my stepchildren anymore after being called names and filing for divorce from my husband after he didn't back me up? I, 30 female, have been married to my husband, 34 male, for six years, and he has twins, a boy and a girl, and they're 16 now. When we started dating, got married, we went to family therapy, and I made it clear that I was not trying to be their mother or replace their mother. Their mother hasn't been in their life since they were about eight. Things have been great with us these past six years. They even started calling me mom when they were around 12 to 13. Recently, their bio mother came back into their lives, and they were really excited. Things were great for about six months and then they started calling me by my real name. That hurt, but it's what they chose to do and I never questioned it. Recently, they've been getting very disrespectful. They don't follow the curfew rules, they're not cleaning up after themselves, they're talking back to me, telling me that I'm not their real mom, that I'm the reason she left, which is not true. I didn't meet him until almost a year and a half after she left. That now she's back, they don't need me anymore. Three weeks ago, there was a big blow up where my stepson called me a bitch. I took his phone and told him to go to his room until his dad came back, but instead, he ran out and went to his mom's. She came over and it was a big argument. She tried to hit me and I pushed her out of my house. My stepdaughter told me if I ever put hands on her mom again, then she'd kick my ass. They both went to their mom's place. After that, I haven't been very active. I usually take them to sports and activities. I didn't wake them up for school, so they've been late a few times. I tell them to have their mom wake them up and take them. We were supposed to go to Disney World for their spring break this week, but I canceled everything. I told them and my husband, and I guess they thought I was bluffing. We were, we were supposed to leave in the middle of the week, and when I didn't start the usual vacation roundup, they were shocked. They started saying that I was jealous that their mom came back in their lives and I'm a horrible person, I'm selfish, there was some name calling and my husband was silent. I asked him if he was going to step in and he said I was wrong for cancelling. I left and went to stay at a hotel. He's been blowing up my phone asking me to come back and yesterday he told me that their mother disappeared again and they've been calling me and crying and apologizing. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't feel like I'm part of their family and they can't just cry and come back now after she disappeared. I told my husband that I want a divorce and I'll be back over this week to get my things but we have nothing to talk about. Yes, I know their mother was manipulating them. I never said otherwise. Yes, they're 16, but that doesn't give them a right to treat me this way. Being 16 doesn't mean you get to be disrespectful and threaten me. I've always been in their corner. I know their feelings matter in this, but I'm also a person with feelings. I'm not only considering or moving forward with this divorce based on how the children acted, it's also how my husband didn't back me up. If I can't count on him to help me navigate this tough situation, then why should I stay? That does not mean that I should be treated the way that I was treated. This is not normal 16 year old behavior. To threaten me? Call me vile names? I just need time for myself and I don't want an apology just because their bio mom ran out on them again. I want an apology because they really mean it and I don't believe anyone can be truly sorry two days after their mother vanished again. I would never just abandon them. But I do need time for myself because my feelings were disregarded. So, am I in the wrong?
I don't know about y'all, but I plan to be outside this summer. I do. I plan to be outside. And I also want evidence and picture proof of everything I plan to do this summer. And I got the perfect little camera to make it happen. You guys, this is the Kodak Printomatic camera. You take the picture and the picture prints out right there. It's absolutely freaking adorable. The picture quality is great. I like this camera so much that I had to get another one. I had to get another one. So y'all know it's real. I absolutely love this little camera. This came with an entire little bundle of goodies, y'all. I'm going to tell you guys about my goodies first. When I say goodies, I mean it came with goodies. Like, it came with goodies. I've got a little carrying pouch. Pop my little camera in there. Be on the way. These are picture frames. Tell me this is not freaking adorable. Those are picture frames. I cannot wait. A photo album? This going in my purse because I need to show everybody. I was outside. Let me show you. You remember that one time I was outside? I got a picture. Remember that time you was with me and we was outside? It's in the book. It's in the book. We've got stickers. If you're anything like me, I'm a scrapbooker. I'm a scrapbooker and these are absolutely freaking perfect. There are tons of little sheets of pictures. The markers, y'all know, I'm a slur for a good pen. I love a good pen and these write really, really good. I almost forgot one. They're hanging picture frames. You put the picture in there, you string out the twine, and you clip them on there. And you just got pictures hanging. Yeah, the evidence will be everywhere. Every. Am I wrong for not giving up the house that I inherited? I, 29 female, was raised in a Christian household. With that came gender roles that were ingrained in me at a young age. My granddad, however, hated that my parents taught us this way, and as I got older, I did too. Because of this, I became very close with my grandparents instead of my own parents. I also have an older brother that my parents labeled the second king of the house. I hate when fathers refer to their sons as kings. Oh my God, please, no. For more info, my grandparents lived in a beautiful house that had no neighbors, many trees, and a garden. They paid off the house after years and it was very special to them. My granddad also had problems with his back and a condition that would get worse until he couldn't go on anymore. After my grandmother passed, he got worse and ended up needing at-home care. He didn't want a stranger in his home, so that wasn't an option. My parents preached that it was punishment for all of his sins, so they wouldn't take care of him and they were planning on putting him in a home. I decided to stay with him since it would just be easier. My job can be worked effectively at home and he'd get care from someone who isn't a total stranger. In the time I took care of him, we filled the home with the love and laughter my grandmother brought to it. As my granddad got worse, not a single call, not from my mom or dad or my brother. We were joking about it once and he said, maybe I should just give you Missy, the house's name, instead of your dad. He's just gonna give it to your brother anyways. He leaves for work before me, so I'm normally the one who has to deal with the tantrums in the morning. I woke Elsie up, and as always, she refused to get dressed. I wasn't really in the mood to deal with her bullshit, and I didn't have the energy to fight with her about it. So I told her that it was okay, and I'll just take her to school in her pajamas. She looked pretty shocked, because I don't think it was the outcome she was expecting, but the rest of the morning went a lot smoother than normal. We got in the car, and she was more quiet than usual, so I could tell she wasn't really sure what to think of it. But after driving a while, I guess the realization set in and she told me she wanted to go back home and change. I told her she had already made her decision and I wasn't driving her back home now. She started freaking out, saying she wanted me to drive her back home and she didn't want to go to school in her pajamas. But I wasn't turning the car around. So we arrived at school and she eventually went in. After my wife came home from collecting her from school, she looked pissed. She didn't say anything in front of Elsie, but later in the evening, as expected, she went off on me. She started saying that I had embarrassed her and made us look like bad parents who can't be bothered to dress our daughter. I told her that I'm sure Elsie isn't the first child to go to school in pajamas and it's not the end of the world. And she wears normal clothes every other day, so one day in pajamas isn't going to make everyone think we're bad parents. She told me she thought it was a cruel thing to do to Elsie, but in my opinion, it was harmless and taught her a lesson. How old is this daughter? Did they? Seven years old. Seven years old. But is like what second grade yeah I, I i don't think i'm putting myself in the shoes of like a teacher or something i don't think i would think it depends on what these pajamas are i feel like a lot of pajamas look like regular clothes of just pajama pants and a t-shirt that would look normal 
What I am flagging, though, is I don't like that he took it into his own hands of like, well, this is how I'm going to parent our child. Yeah. And it's like different. And the way he's talking about his wife, there's this thing of like, oh, of course, she went off on me. And I think this was right. And she disagrees. And I'm like, you're putting this out there for a bunch of people on the Internet, as opposed to talking to your wife about how you solve this dilemma together. It just feels like communication could have been had. Absolutely. A little bit. It's definitely giving that like exacerbated undertone. Like, yeah. it's kind of like scoffing at her like you know she's overreacting again I, I think she's justified in being mad at him for doing this and not telling her yeah I think there was like a better way to go about this too one he could have been receptive to the feedback like I get it you know I think this was a good lesson for Elsie to learn but I hear you next time I'll do something else but I think even in the moment and she's seven she's trying to push boundaries she's trying to determine her own autonomy or you know what little a seven year old does have and so as a parent you could have maybe thought a had a couple steps and been like, you know, we're probably going to get to school. She's not going to want the pajamas. Let me grab a pair of pants and a sweatshirt and just bring it in the car in case she does change her mind. Because I think when you get to the point of you're at school and she realized that you called her on her bluff, she's going to realize that the boundary is there. Like, yeah. you know, she kind of learns at that point, like, I I fucked up. Especially if you do that, she learns that you're playing 4D chess that she can't compete with. Exactly. It's like, oh my God, do I have an original thought? You're yeah. thinking of what I'm thinking of before I yeah. think it? It would ruin her in a in a way that I, as a parent, uh, might be good. If I had a seven-year-old who was doing this as well, yep. I'd probably cave in, I feel like. I'd, so, I'd turn the car around. Yeah. I would. I probably would too. I'd, I, I'd hate embarrassing someone. Yeah. And I also remember what it was like being in elementary school oh and my just God. knowing you're going to be judged. Kids bully for way less. Oh my God, yeah. It's terrible. Especially nowadays. Mm -hmm. Kids, now that they have access to the internet, oh my gosh. their insults are devastating. The time my boyfriend chronically lied and cheated on me, so I stole his mom. Tell me more. T tell me all of it. When I was 20 through 23, I was in my first somewhat long-term relationship and my first relationship in which we lived together. It was a bit rocky and we both caused a lot of problems in the relationship, but we finally broke up when I found out my boyfriend had been cheating on me regularly. He had also been lying about working on unpaid internship that would have transitioned to a job. This allowed him to spend hours going out with other women and excused his lack of income. So I was partly supporting him financially along with his mom, who he was also lying to as well. Even though my relationship with him was never stable, his mom loved me and would often openly take my side when we were fighting. She had four sons and no daughters, and she told me she considered me the daughter she never had. So when the cheating and the lying was uncovered, it wasn't hard to get her to take my side. She was the person I went crying to, and I told her this is the sort of thing you cry about to your mom. And since I don't have a relationship with mine, I was glad that she was there for me to talk to. Okay, first of all, let me just, um, just get my fucking mind out of the gutter. Because the way I heard your title... And immediately everything just just straight to hell. So I'm glad that we are back on this. We are on one pick, one accord. We are on one accord now. His mom was, of course, furious with him for lying to the both of us, effectively scamming us out of our money and for cheating on me. Even when he complained to her about everything that I had done wrong in the relationship, she refused to believe him because in her eyes, I could do no wrong. She sat her in front of a computer and made him apply for jobs in front of her, then supervised his job search process the way one might supervise a child cooking for the first time. <laughs> Once he found a job, she made him pay us both back for the money we spent supporting him while he was lying to us. Go mom. Go mom. Not your mama garnishing your paychecks. <laughs> Go mom. Go mom. After he had finished paying us back and moved out of her place, she spoke to him rarely and was very clear that she no longer trusted him. She even warned his next girlfriend that he was a cheater. And from what I've since heard, she was right to, as he has apparently cheated on other girlfriends since. She and I remained close until she passed away two years ago. She was one of the maybe three people I've ever felt I could truly be vulnerable with. She was the only person I told about a particularly difficult mental health situation that I was going through. I really did start to see her as a surrogate mother. This is absolutely beautiful. Like in all ways, it's beautiful that he was caught cheating 
and then had to pay back everything that you guys had spent on you know on him while he was out there doing his dirt but i love that you got all of that but you were able to get a surrogate mother along the way she was able to get the daughter that she never had you guys bonded in ways that so few people connect when it comes to the girlfriend of your children or the mother of yours you know of your spouse this is absolutely beautiful and i love this for you i love this so much am i the asshole for refusing to visit my mother-in-law because of a child basically exactly next door to my mother-in-law lives the sister of my current partner winter winter has a husband and a baby what seems to be the problem the child i hate children in a special way you see i've got somewhat sensitive hearing and children especially young ones are really loud i don't like their volume i don't like their clinginess and i especially hate it when all people talk about is that one baby in the room the only children i actually don't mind are the well-behaved ones I already visited once with my partner when the baby was about a few months old, and that constant screaming gave me headaches and literal pain. I was definitely not happy to be forced to hold a drooling infant. Another problem I have is how Winter changed after getting the child. She turned all sour and always feels like she has to lecture everybody around her, even for the smallest things, me included. Even though I'm not even engaged to my partner, I'm still a girlfriend. I think I might be the asshole because I keep refusing to see somebody because of my dislike of children. Am I the asshole? This one is titled, Am I the Askinoff for telling my sister that what I give her kids should have nothing to do with her preferences and that they deserve to be happy? I-17 female have a... Hold up. OP's 17. Let's keep that in mind. I-17 female have a sister, Rebecca, 29 female, who has three kids, Lori, 8 female, Cammie, 7 female, and Trey, 7 male. I babysit them, and they are really good kids. I like to bring over toys when I babysit. All of their favorites are dolls. We also like watching shows and movies from doll brands. Rebecca is a vlogger with the whole beige aesthetic. It isn't my style, but it's not my business either. Now that I have a job and get paid for babysitting, plus a store discount for what I buy there, it is the first year I can really buy people gifts on my own for Christmas. Most of it I got months ago. I got each of Rebecca's kids two dolls and something extra. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. I got Lori a signature Monster High G3 Frankie doll, a Winter Poppy Rainbow High doll, and a Rainbow Dash necklace. I got Cammie a Neon Frights G3 Monster High Torally doll, and a LOL OMG doll, I don't know the name, with a kind of a camo outfit and a poppet purse. I got Trey a Rainbow High Dahlia, a Disney Tiana ba Ballet doll, and Lisa Frank stickers. All of these are child-friendly and cater to what they like, which I would know from my time with them. When Rebecca heard I got them gifts, she wanted to see them. I showed her, and she said that I should have known them. She used the word us better than that and not to have gotten these things. She told me to return them, which I can't return most of it due to how and when I got them and get something else and that before i buy it i approve it with her i got mad and asked what was wrong with what i got and she called them disgusting said that they don't fit in with anything i told her that she might not be into those things but they aren't for her so her preferences aren't a factor and that her kids deserve to be happy she got mad and said that they are happy and stormed out our mom is siding with rebecca and said that if i really don't want to buy something else i can just sign on with her gifts I really don't want to. I got them gifts that they deserve to have, and I don't understand why I shouldn't just give them to them. But I could be wrong. No one is agreeing with me. There's a little update here, but uh, but let's chat for a second. Okay, I don't know what the beige aesthetic thing is. So in the intro, when I was like, it sounds it sounds like an insult of some kind. Uh, apparently, this is this is a content theme that I am unaware of. What is beige aesthetic? You know what? I should have just asked Candy Thunder. Candy Thunder. Help me out here. What what is the beige aesthetic? Everything is beige. Walls, toys, clothes, everything, everything, everything. So okay. So she doesn't like the aesthetic of the things. Couldn't they? Everything has to match this style, toys included. That is the most ridiculous thing that I have ever heard in my entire life. Also, couldn't they just still get the toys and don't they have like a beige toy crate or a chest or something that they can put them in to match the aesthetic if she happens to be blogging and taking a picture in their room at the freaking time? Like there is no way that you could make everything in a kid's life beigey and expect them to be happy. 
You can't. Oh, Candy Thunder sending me an image now to to uh, further her point here. Oh, you know, okay. It's so freaking limiting. And to aesthetically limit what your kids can be into because you want it to match the palette of your home is bonkers. It sounds like priorities are a little bit out of whack. Now, like the second picture you sent me here, Candy Thunder, um, which is here. I'll at least hold it up real quick. So it's, yeah, it's all it's all beigey stuff, right? It's all minimalist be beige baby toys, that kind of thing. Baby stuff is a little bit different, right? Because, uh, well, no, not really, because contrast is is important for for babies, uh, especially in the early formative times. That's why a lot of the learning tools are black and white. Contrast is important. But when it's when it's baby stuff, younger kid stuff, like you get in whatever color, so whatever. But when you get into dolls and that kind of thing, like they aren't allowed to be into something because it doesn't match the aesthetic of what she's trying to show the world. Screw her. This is ridiculous. It is ridiculous and limiting. And the fact that someone can place that over the happiness of their children genuinely pisses me off. At maximum, put it in your beige toy tote when you don't want it to be out to be seen by the rest of the flipping world. You can't ask someone to take a gift back because it doesn't match your home aesthetic. Get over yourself. You had kids. This is part of the deal. They're messy. Not everything's gonna match. There's a lot of randomly different things. Container that does fit into the palette. Why does it have to be a can't own? I just don't. I just don't understand. Story time about how I got my manager fired because I didn't like him. Yeah, this might make me a terrible person, but a girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do. Disclaimer, this is not my story time, but send me an Instagram. I started working as a wedding planner in the company about six months ago. And yes, I've always been very ambitious, but I definitely took it too far this time. In the company, there were other wedding planners as well, and we were all managed by the same person. Let's call him Tom. Tom was an okay manager, but here's the thing. When I met him, I hated him right away. He was lazy and incompetent, and I knew that I could do his job 10 times better. Then I hated him even more when I found out how much money he earned. He was making over two hundred thousand dollars a year after a week of working there i realized what he was doing he would tell all of the wedding planners to do things throughout the day that added up to being his actual job but none of us realized it because he was telling all of us individually without the others knowing but i'm really observant and i realized it right away i started watching him all the time he would come into the office really late would make himself coffee and practically eat an entire box of cereal at his desk once he was finished with that he would email us our task for the day which was the stuff that he needed to do then he would play video games for five hours part two is part two of how i got my manager fired because I didn't like him. Does this make me evil? Yes. This claimers is not my story time. I sent him an Instagram. When I realized he was palming off all his work on the other people, I decided to start documenting all of his laziness. So like I said in part one, he would spend his morning eating an entire box of cereal. Then he would send emails out telling us what to do for the day, which was everything he had to do for the day. Then for about five hours, he would play video games on his laptop. And how did I know this? Every 15 minutes or so, he would go get a snack. So I would run into his office and take a picture of his laptop. He didn't even bother to fake it. You might wonder why no one else noticed. My my desk was the closest one to his office. Also, our boss worked remotely and would only come into the office about once a week. And when she would come into the office, he would act completely different. So after documenting all of his activities for about a month, I decided to go to the boss and show her everything. I kept every single text message he ever sent me of him asking me to do something for him. I had all the emails he'd ever sent us. I had videos of him eating a full box of cereal at his desk for about two hours. And I had all the pictures I took of his laptop while he was playing video games. And all of it was time stamped. I asked my boss if we could jump on a call and she said yes. By the way, my boss is amazing. She's a total boss lady and doesn't take crap from anyone, so I knew that she would fire him right away. When we got on the phone, I asked her to check her email and she looked at all the evidence. Then she told me, wow, I'm actually not surprised. I told her that if she gave me the job, I would be extremely productive and get us more clients. She thanked me and called the manager right away. And guess what? The following day, he was not there. My boss called me and thanked me for being honest with her. Part three is up. Story time about how I got my manager fired because I didn't like him. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I was sending me an Instagram. When I finally got my manager fired the next Day, my boss called me and thanked me for giving her all the evidence, but I didn't stop there. I asked her if she could consider me for his job and she told me that she would think about it. So I took it a step further, emailed her the list of new clients
chance that I had brought in, and it did the trick. She emailed me back saying that she would give me a chance. That meant that I was now gonna get $200,000 a year, and that I didn't have to deal with bridezillas anymore. Since I became manager, I've doubled our client list and increased revenue by 12%. I also convinced my boss to give everyone a bonus. I even redecorated the entire office, making it more functional, and everybody loves the new space. I also got myself a fancy two-bedroom apartment, which has a pool and a sauna, a doorman, and I get massages every single week. And I got myself a very new nice car. I'm currently planning a girl's trip for me and my friends to go to Greece. I would have never been able to do all of this had I not gotten that job. So if you're wondering if I feel guilty about getting my manager fired, no I don't. There's nothing more disgusting than a lazy man. I did check his Instagram after sending this story time. He's gained about 40 pounds and plays video games for a living. Not sure how that works, but good for me. Bye. Emma the asshole for telling my sister-in-law we are not going to cater to her just because she's pregnant. My sister-in-law is six months pregnant and is high risk, and because of that, she's unable to work so she couldn't keep her apartment. The father isn't in the picture, so she moved in with us. Her and I have never had the best relationship, but I put that aside because my husband wanted to help her. We are not charging her rent or anything because she has little money. And we're buying all the groceries, and I do a lot of cooking. Here's where the issue is. We live a pretty healthy lifestyle, and I don't like a lot of junk food because I don't want the kids to have that. So I really don't buy a ton. We're not super strict or anything, but we have a thing of ice cream for a week or so, and then the next trip we might get brownie mix or something else. She has been requesting candy, ice cream, pretzel chips, basically any kind of junk food because she's craving it. We're not super rich, but I don't want to be spending money on stuff that only she would eat. And I don't want the kids constantly asking why she can have it, but not them. She's also been asking me to cook different meals for certain things because they don't make her feel well. Last night she complained again that I don't keep anything that she can eat in the house and that she doesn't like any of the food. I got a little short with her, so we're not going to kid her to her just because she got knocked up.